Well, looking at the tape, uh, thought our guys did a great job. Um, kind of everything I'd said after the game, you know, that Colorado started fast and kind of hung in there, weathered the storm, and, and uh, settled down on defense and played played really good defense. And and then in the second half, got got a little more going with the run game on offense and did what we needed to win. I thought some. You know, there were some individuals that made some really, really good plays, and you could see those guys stepping up and, and getting better. You know, it's been a, it was awesome to see Quentin Pounds, you know, make a catch like that. We've seen him make some really big plays in practice, um, and you can kind of feel him coming on, and so it was good to get confidence in the game, making him play like that in the game. And thought Vita Vea, you know, was playing at a really, really high level not only on special teams, but um, on defense. And, um, you know, Miles Bryant doing a good job. Jordan Miller getting two interceptions. I mean, there's just a lot of guys um, playing good. I thought our offensive line played well. Um, so, yeah, it was a good game. It was a good game to build on um, as we move forward. The, this slow start, I guess, offensively, yeah. is there any concern there at all or is that just eh, whatever it's you finish the game the way you want so yeah I mean I think everybody you know everybody's trying to figure out how to start fast on also no one wants to come out there and you know it's a little bit like turnovers and those type of things I mean and uh you know I, I don't really have the answer there we'd like to start faster for sure and two out of the four games we kind of started fast but the first one in this one we didn't. Maybe it has something to do with being on the road. I don't know. And emotions and being just different. Um, but we'll continue to pay attention to it and try to figure that out. Did you sense a game like this in a run game coming? Or do you feel like they really took a, a step from it? Well, I, I think the run game, like I keep saying that, is, you know, the run, the run game's not always pretty. It's... You know, you need all those guys on the same page. And like I said before, and then when they are on the same page and block it pretty clean, the running back still has to make somebody miss to get something done. And Miles is usually pretty good at that. Um, and we got to call enough runs. I think this is the game that we probably called the most amount of runs. And so you start to get into that rhythm. So, you know, there's, there's multiple factors, but I think, we, I think we took a step. What was the game plan with Kamari in terms of filling in for LeVon? Or was, I mean, was it literally next man up, or were there some things that, that you wanted to get accomplished with him? No, it's, you know, we always have a backup. I mean, heck, a guy could get hurt on the first play or, you know, whatever. And um, so we kind of always have a guy, like, who would fill this role if that happens? You know, we use a lot of different personnel groups and, and those type of things. And, you know, who's, you know, who's similar to this guy that could get it kind of done? So, um you know, he's a guy that's, he and LeBron have kind of had similar similar type roles in terms of being kind of utility guys that they can carry the ball, they can block, they're bigger kind of backs. What do you want to see out of Tristan this week, and is he still firmly your total guy? Yeah, you, I mean, we, we obviously got to get him back in, into a groove. You know, he's got a, he's got a very powerful leg. Um, and so we just got to get him get him going again. Um, you know, those, those field goals were just a little bit off, but you know, just obviously with the extra points, you know, he can make those in his sleep. And when, when we're not, um, you know, it's a game of confidence. Is there an opportunity for Van? To There's an opportunity for everybody at any time. I mean, I've said I've said that a, a thousand times. You know, it's a fine line between helping a guy get back into his rhythm and being fair to the team and what we're all about as well. So competition's always ongoing. What's the, what's the status of Chico? Yeah, Chico, L let me just start with this. You know, I, I just want to reiterate this again. Um, you know, if we have a long-term injury, I'm usually going to come in here on Monday and say something about it. But if it's week to week, you know, it's a couple weeks, sometimes it's very hard for us to um, know how long a guy is out. And that's the only reason I don't say that stuff. It's not for our fans. You know, we want our fans to know as much about this program as we can. It's a competitive advantage when that stuff comes out early, like about Byron Murphy. So I look around the country and, you know, all these guys aren't playing and you see it come out on Saturday, but then it gets out of here early. And it's like we have another, you know, the beat writer for Colorado coming out and saying, hey, these guys are not playing this guy. 
I mean, that's the only reason. It hurts us when it doesn't come out when we want it. If it's long term, and everybody knows, you know, this is going to be a long time, then we always announce it. But I would just hope that everybody could be on the same page and know when it comes out early, you know, game time decision type stuff. That makes it hard on us. Chico will be out. Chico broke his ankle. And, uh, you know, he's getting, I think they're looking at it, consulting with the doctors today. Um, but it, we think there's going to be surgery and all that. So, um, you know, we won't count on Chico for, you know, probably the rest of the season. What's his chances of being in the redshirt? Are you looking at that? Or? I think they're going to be really good um, if that, you know, comes to that. So just do the math and he's right there. Did uh, Ryan Bowman earn himself a scholarship? Ryan Bowman's doing a good job. Um, really appreciate how that guy's playing and, you know, he's. Seems the one one guy that's kind of always getting around the quarterback and doing a good job with all those things. How, how satisfying is it? I mean, obviously, when your guys play well, it's always satisfying. But they have two kids that came through the walk-on program, like Miles and Bowman, to play. Yeah. Well, when we, you know, for the most part, when we have guys walk on, I mean, we're hoping that they can get into the mix. I mean. Where I came from, we had a we had walk-ons playing the NFL a couple times. So, you know, if we want somebody to walk on here, we're thinking that the guy has a good chance to get on the field and help us win. And that's what that thing's all about. We're not trying to just get guys to be here and take up space. Chris, when your D line is playing really well, what does that do? What are you more able to do in terms of the linebacking and whether that's blitzing and the DBs? What's the luxury that you get when the D line is getting that push? Well, you get better coverage because you can put more guys into coverage if it just comes from the D line. If you don't have to send backers and and DBs and all those type of things, as soon as you do that, there's going to be more holes or man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary. So. Heck, we'd like to rush two and get pressure, and then we got a lot of lot of answers. So the the more that you can, you know, get pressure with four guys, I mean, that, that gives you a big luxury. Um, we'll always mix it up, but um, when the D line can bring pressure without us having to bring extra pressure, that that really helps. Chris, with Chico, how do you feel like you have enough there to just bump guys up, or with Salvan potentially maybe move over to? take his spot in the, in the offense? How do you kind of just move forward to handle that? For All those things, you know. I mean, you always you always hate to lose guys. I mean, it's just, I just feel really bad for, you know, like we all do for Chico. And I mean, that's, that's hard. And, um, you know, guys that are playing well and have worked so hard and then they're going to be out for long. But that's part of football. And then we just, they just got to stay positive. I mean, I think one of the, Number one things in terms of getting a guy back, you know, as fast as you can, is, is their mental approach to it. And, you know, our trainers and doctors would always say that. I mean, just those guys being more upbeat and so hard when you get slugged in the gut like that. And so we really just think about those kids that are going to be out. But after that, it's next man up. That's part of the philosophy of what we're, I mean, that is football, that is how it goes. And nobody feels sorry for us at all outside of this building. I mean, we really feel for Chico, but everybody else is throwing a party when they see Chico's not gonna be out there. And so the next guy better step up and that's gonna come from multiple guys. I mean, that's how we do it anyways. It's not any one guy, okay, you're the guy. We'll just, we move parts and pieces around and see who does, um, certain roles well. Obviously, the five sweeps a big, a big luxury to have, and he runs it so well and ran it really well and, and for one play in the Colorado game. Who, who on this wrestler do you trust? Got a lot of guys. I mean, I think we've got half our receivers who can do it. Most of our running back core can do it. So just move guys around. It's not a huge part of what we do. So we just try to get the ball to our athletes and space and whatever that means. Injury. Uh, Zim Victor probably had his best game of the year, uh, or best game of the year on Saturday. What did you see out of him and coming back and his mental state coming back? Yeah, um, you know I think a lot of guys um, 
and Azim being one, you know, are starting to get starting to get their their game feet under them, and Azim's running around pretty good. And we move him around a little bit to create some matchups, and you know, he's a physical player, and you know, he showed up pretty good in the game. Chris, what's your approach with a guy that suffers a long-term injury like that? Just one-on-one, -on -one, do you kind of wait for some time to pass and you just kind of meet with him and just kind of see where his mind is? Or mm -hmm. do you go to him immediately just to kind of see where his emotions are? How do, how do you usually handle that? Yeah, I think our guys are so really good with, with, our, with each other that, you know, we always, all of our coaches are all eyes and hands on. But, you know, sometimes I lay back a little bit because then everybody kind of gets on with their life and their routine in a couple, couple weeks, and 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 so that's when you really, I think, need to pay attention to them. And you know, it's hard right now, but I think a lot of people will pay attention to our guys that are that are injured and try to love them up as best they can. And but you know, they'll be okay. They're you know strong guys. And I mean, Chico had a really good demeanor after the game. He really did. I mean, sometimes I kind of shake my head and. Um, you know, wish I could be that positive sometimes about things like they were, but it is what it is, and you know it happens for a reason. And I don't know what the reason is. I mean, that's what Chico says to me, and you know, I mean, it's just a, it's a good demeanor, and he's still got a lot of football to play.